is the right side, supine cadaver. Radiation is from the right side, camera person is also on the right side. We have completely removed the fat of the fascia and the fascia letter, which is the deep fascia of the thigh. The structures that we see in front of us, this is the femoral triangle. So let's take a quick look at the boundaries of the femoral triangle. This is the sartorius, which is the lateral boundary of the femoral triangle, taking origin from the anterior superior leg spine and getting inserted onto the pes anteriorness of the tibia. The medial boundary is this muscle here. This muscle is the adductor longus, which takes origin from the crest of the pubic bone and gets inserted onto the middle one-third of the linea aspera. The place where the sartorius overlaps the adductor longus, that is the apex of the triangle. And the base of the triangle is this ligament here, which is the superior aspect, which is the inguinal ligament. And it extends from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. The roof was bridged over by the fascial light, as I mentioned, and that has been removed. And the roof was pierced by an opening, which is called the saphenous opening, and covered by a thin membrane called the cribriform fascia. And piercing through the cribriform fascia was this vein here. This is the long saphenous vein. The long saphenous vein pierced through the cribriform fascia, and it opened into the femoral vein. So that brings me to the floor of the femoral triangle. Going from lateral to medial, laterally this muscle, this is the combined muscle of the iliacus and the psoas major, called the iliopsoas muscle. The iliopsoas muscle comes out from under the inguinal ligament through the muscular compartment and it gets inserted onto the lesser trochanter where my finger has disappeared. Just medial to the iliopsoas, we have this muscle here. And we can see a little bit of that muscle here. This is the pectineus muscle. Further medially, under the femoral vein, we can see this muscle here. This is the adductor brevis. So these three muscles constitute the floor of the femoral triangle. And after that, we have the adductor longus, which I mentioned is the medial boundary of the femoral triangle. Now let's take a look at the contents. This is one content, which I have lifted up here. This is the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve comes out through the muscular compartment, along with the iliopsoas muscle. And it's a very short nerve. The moment it comes into the femoral triangle, it immediately divides into hundreds of branches. And we can see the branches here. These are the branches which supply all the muscles of the anterior compartment. And we can see it even better when I lift up the sartorius and we can see the branches even more clearly. There are two cutaneous branches of the femoral nerve. One of them pierces through the skin and we can see it supplies the skin of the anterior aspect of the thigh. And this is referred to as the anterior femoral cutaneous nerve which supplies the large portion of the anterior aspect of the thigh skin. The other cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve is this one. This is the saphenous nerve. The saphenous nerve runs in the rectal canal, which I shall mention just now, and it continues along with the long saphenous vein to the medial side of the leg up to the foot. So these are the branches of the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve is the main supply of all the muscles of the anterior compartment. And if the femoral nerve is injured, then it will lead to paralysis of the muscles of the anterior compartment, especially the quadriceps and that will lead to inability to extend the knee. To continue with the other contents of the femoral triangle, we have this artery and this vein here. These two, during the process of embalming, had become highly thrombosed and hard and they were to fused together almost as tough as cement. So in the process of separating, the artery inadvertently ruptured. So we will put the pieces together and we can see this is the femoral artery. The femoral artery is the continuation of the external iliac artery and the femoral vein is the continuation of the external iliac vein. Both of these, they come out through the vascular compartment of the subinguinal space. The femoral artery and the femoral vein, they were enclosed in a tough sheath, which is called the femoral sheath, which is derived from the iliacus fascia and the transversalis fascia of the abdomen, which has been removed. This is the profunda femoris artery. And we can see it is accompanied by the profunda femoris vein. It gives off the following branches and we can see the branches here. This is one branch which I have lifted up here. This is the lateral circumflex femoral artery. And this is the other branch. This is the medial circumflex femoral artery. The profunda femoris artery is almost as big as the main femoral artery. And it goes deep inside and it runs close to the insertion of the adductor magnus at the linea aspera and it continues and it gives four perforating arteries which supply the posterior aspect of the thigh. That brings me to some of the muscles which we can see on the medial side of the thigh, the same dissection. As I mentioned, this is the adductor longus and this is the adductor brevis. 
If I lift up the adductor longus, we can see it another muscle here. This is the adductor magnus, and we can see the adductor magnus here. These three muscles, they belong to the medial compartment or the obturator compartment, and there's a fourth muscle which we can see here. This is the gracilis. We can see between the adductor magnus and the adductor brevis and the adductor longus, we can see the neurovascular structures coming. These are the branches of the obturator nerve and the obturator artery, which are the nerves and the artery of the medial compartment. The adductor magnus gets inserted onto the full length of the linea aspera, and it's got a hamstring component, which is on the posterior aspect of the thigh. The gracilis muscle runs on the medial side of the thigh, and it gets inserted along with the sartorius in a structure called the pes anserinus on the upper medial aspect of the tibia. That brings me to the adductor canal. The adductor canal starts at the apex of the femoral triangle. And the apex of the femoral triangle is where the sartorius overlaps the adductor longus. So it starts approximately from here. It's a 15 centimeter long canal in the middle of the thigh and it ends at the adductor hiatus which is on the back of the thigh, back of the knee. The adductor canal is bounded medially by the sartorius and under that there was a fascia which has been removed called the subsartorial fascia with a plexus called the subsartorial plexus which also has been removed. The lateral boundary is this muscle here which is the vastus medialis and posterior boundary is this muscle here. This is the adductor longus and behind that is the adductor magnus. So these are the boundaries of the adductor canal. In order to see the adductor canal more clearly, I have reflected the sartorius so that we can see the contents more clearly. And now let's take a look at the contents. We can see this nerve, which I mentioned earlier. This is the saphenous nerve. This is the longest cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve. This is the anterior most content of the adductor canal. This continues through the adductor canal and then it goes under the sartorius and it comes on the medial side of the leg and it accompanies this vein here. This is the long saphenous vein and it supplies the anteromedial aspect of the leg right up to the medial side of the foot. This is the longest cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve and it is also the only branch of the femoral nerve which goes outside the thigh. Just behind the saphenous nerve, we have this structure here. This is the continuation of the femoral artery. And this femoral artery is accompanied just posterior to that by this structure here. This is the femoral vein. These two structures, the femoral artery and the femoral vein, they go through the full length of the adductor canal and they exit through the adductor hiatus, which is on the posterior aspect of the knee. The adductor hiatus is an opening between the adductor and the hamstring component of the adductor magnus. And finally, we can see one more nerve here. This is the nerve to the vastus medialis. This is the vastus medialis. The adductor canal basically is a passageway from the apex of the femoral triangle to the popliteal fossa. And just to complete the story, let me quickly mention the other muscles that we can see here. This is the rectus femoris, which is one of the important components of the quadriceps muscle. And we can see it's getting inserted onto the quadriceps tendon. When I lift up the rectus femoris, we can see the next muscle underneath it. This is the vastus intermedius. And incidentally, we can also see the neurovascular structures, especially branches of the femoral nerve, ramifying here and supplying it. The next muscle on the lateral aspect, this is the vastus lateralis, which takes origin from the lateral aspect of the linea aspera and then comes medially like this. And the other muscle is this one, this is the vastus medialis, which takes attachment from the medial lip of the linea aspera and comes laterally like this. And all these four muscles then unite to form the quadriceps tendon, which gets inserted onto the quad patella and thereafter into the ligamentum patellae. This is the most important extensor of the leg, of the knee, and this, as I mentioned, is supplied by the femoral nerve. Patient who's got weakness of the quadriceps, when he tries to walk, his leg tends to flex inadvertently because of the unopposed action of the hamstrings. And therefore, when this person walks, he holds just above his knee to prevent inadvertent flexion of the knee. So that is a clinical correlation pertaining to the femoral nerve. So these are the structures which I wanted to show you in the anterior dissection of the femoral triangle and the anterior compartment of the thigh with a little bit of the structures on the medial aspect of the thigh.